Good morning everybody. Um, it's nice to uh, have a change of venue. <coughs> We're currently in Biddle Town Hall, which is a splendid building, and uh, uh, we thank uh, Biddle Council for their hospitality. Um, in terms of the, the meeting itself, uh, we have uh, just completed a site visit um, uh, from the, the to emerge from the 13th of September meeting. Uh, and attending that were also uh, Nigel Bates, who's the local member, and Keith Glunder, who's a neighbouring member. Um, so we'll start the, build, the, <coughs> the meeting uh, uh, properly. Uh, it is advertised that we uh, will start in the meeting at 11, but because of problems with, uh, with traffic and uh, uh, such like, we are uh, running to something like 40 or 50 minutes late. So could we start please with the agenda item number one, which is apologies. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I've received apologies from councillors Jack Abrahams, Paul Snape, Jill Waring and David Williams. Thank you. Okay, and uh, we've also got the minutes from the meeting of the 13th of September. Mm-hmm. You've read them, moved them. Are you happy with them, Carolyn? Absolutely. Okay, I'll just sign those and then we've, we've done it. Thank you. That goes over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and we'll work, we'll move on to the uh, single item uh, agenda on the um, Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. And this is an application for the addition of an alleged public footpath 89 Biddulph Town via Mill Cottage to Hurst Road, Biddulph. In addition to an application to modify the particulars contained in the definitive map and statement, which require modification in relation to footpath, public footpath 89 at Biddulph. Do you want to, to uh, I presume we don't need to do the full um, presentation, but uh, do you want to say anything, Hannah? Um, it, it's Presumably, Shem, we only need to look for any additional information from the previous report. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to be led by officers on this one. Um, in sub to members, I'm happy to summarise again the, the application and the evidence, or if members would just prefer to go straight into discussing the matter, or if members have any specific questions, I, I, I don't mind. I would um, like, as Chair, that we did it properly and just had a, 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 not, not the full presentation, but the, no. the relevant points from the 13th of September. Of course, that's fine. Um, so, to summarise again um, the main points regarding this specific application. Um, so, there are two parts to the application. Um, so, firstly, two routes have been applied for. Um, so, as um, members um, will recall from the report in Appendix B, the routes have been separated into Route A to B to C, which forms the very eastern section of the applied for routes and Route B to D. So both routes at their southern end connect to existing public footpath 89 Biddulph at, at that footpath's eastern end. So public footpath 89 Biddulph is currently on the definitive map as the cul-de-sac route. So, footpath 89 connects to Grange Road to the west and it stops just south of Mill Cottage, which is situated northeast of the footpath. However, footpath 89 does not connect to another highway to the east, um, and public footpath 89 is a main component of this application. So, the applicant has identified that there is an anomaly in the definitive map and statement in relation to footpath 89 and that the termination point of the route depicted on the map is not the same as the description in the statement. The statement states that public footpath 89 finishes at road about 150 yards northwest of Elmhurst, which would be Hurst Road, but this is not how the route is shown on the definitive map. So evidence has been submitted from the time of the first draft definitive map, which came about as a result of the 1949 Act. This shows that a parish survey map was produced showing the line of public footpath 89 Biddulph as it is currently um, shown on the definitive map. 
However, a further line has been added onto the parish survey map in green, connecting from the eastern end of public footpath 89 and continuing in a northerly direction to connect to Hurst Road. Next to the green line in pencil is written the word add. This green coloured line follows the same line as the applied for route marked A to B to C. The documentation shows that a decision was made that public footpath 89 should connect to a public highway at both ends and therefore should continue to Hurst Road. However, no definitive map has ever shown public footpath 89 continuing along the line of the route marked A to B to C, despite the fact that the statement has always referred to public footpath 89 terminating at road northwest of Elmhurst. No evidence has been found as to why this is the case. An order can be made to modify the particulars in the mapping statement where there is conflict between the mapping statement. So, for example, where the description and the depiction of the way do not correspond. And this is dealt with under Section 53, 3C3 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act. So the applicant has applied for an order to be made to modify the particulars in the mapping statement for public footpath 89 and specifically for an order to be made to modify the map by continuing the line of existing public footpath 89 along the line of the route marked A to B to C. So the map and statement would then correspond with each other based on the evidence from the first draft definitive map. Alternatively, an order could be made to amend the statement to reflect where the current line of public footpath 89 terminates, as opposed to changing the line of public footpath 89 and therefore changing the definitive map. In addition to this, the applicant has stated that they also have evidence that if a modification was not made to the map to continue the line of existing public footpath 89, then historical and user evidence supports the addition of a public footpath along the line of the route marked A to B to C as a separate route and also for the section of route marked B to D. The applicant has submitted several historical documents including Finance Act evidence, Tither Ward evidence, a railway deposited map, parish survey evidence and a range of other old maps. Previously a working mill was situated on the land that is affected by the application routes. From the historical evidence, it would appear that workers at the mill would use public footpath 89 from Grange Road to the west to get to the mill and then would possibly continue up to Hurst Road. However, on review of all the historical evidence, there is no clear evidence that public footpath rights have historically existed along the line of the route marked A to B to C or the section of route applied for that runs along the line of B to D. When we consider the user evidence submitted with the application, the applicant has submitted 12 user evidence forms providing evidence of use for both routes A to B to C and route B to D. The evidence shows that, was a, that there was a challenge to use of the route in 2015. Ten of the users claim to have used the route from points A to B to D and two users claim to have used the route from points A to B to C. Two users claimed the original line was along the line A to B to C, but the route changed to the route um, currently A to B to D. One of the users claims the change in the line occurred in the 1970s. Under statute, use of a route must be as of right and without interruption for 20 years prior to use of the route being brought into question, unless there was evidence that the landowner intended to dedicate, dedicate the route to the public. Six users have used the route A to B to D for the full relevant 20 year period. No users have used the route A to B to C for the full relevant 20 year period, that being from 1995 to 2015. Several users have referred to public footpath finger post signs at Hurst Road, which is at the north end of the route. On further investigation, it appears that Staffordshire Moorlands District Council promoted usage of the track down to Mill Cottage as one of their promoted walks. However, when the District Council became aware that there was no recorded public footpath along this track on the definitive map, they removed any signage and stopped promoting the walk. Several users have said that the previous owners of Mill Cottage were aware of members of the public using the alleged route and they did not take any steps to prevent this usage. The evidence of use for the route mark B to C is very low and therefore it is argued that the evidence of use for this section of route is insufficient to meet either the statutory or common law tests.
In relation to the evidence of use for the route marked A to B to D, a reasonable number of the public have provided evidence of use for this section of route during the relevant 20-year period, and that use was as of right. The user and landowner evidence contradict, as overall the users state that they did not seek permission to use the route, nor were they ever told by a landowner prior to 2015 that they could not use the route. However, a previous landowner has provided a statement for the period 1987 and 2001, which covers six years of the relevant 20-year period, that they told people seen using the route that it was not a public footpath. Evidence has also been put forward that a retaining wall was built in 2001 and this would have prevented access for walkers along the route mark B to C, which might explain why the level of use for this section of route is so low, and possibly the route mark B to D, although the County Council's mapping would suggest the retaining wall falls to the east of the route marked B to D and therefore would not have prevented access. Um, so if I just remind members of the relevant legal tests with this application. Um, so in order for an order to be made to modify the particulars of the map and statement for existing public footpath 89, the evidence needs to show on a balance of probabilities that the map and or statement is wrong and one or both need modifying. To add a public footpath to the definitive map and statement, it needs to be shown either on a balance of probabilities or that it can reasonably be alleged that a public footpath exists and therefore should be added to the definitive map and statement. Um, so if I just conclude, firstly the issue of whether the map and statement should be modified in relation to public footpath 89 does need to be addressed. It is officer's recommendation that the evidence shows that the map should be modified and an order should be made to continue the line of existing public footpath 89 along the line of the route marked A to B to C to correspond with the statement. Therefore, it is left to consider whether the historical and user evidence shows the existence of public footpath rights along the line of the route marked B to D. Officer's recommendation is that the user evidence is sufficient to reasonably allege a public footpath exists along the line of the route marked B to D, and therefore the order should be made to add this section of the route to the definitive map and statement. It is for the panel to decide whether to accept or reject officer's recommendation. The panel may determine that an order should be made to modify the map for existing public footpath 89. Alternatively, the panel can determine that an order should be made to modify the statement for public footpath 89. Alternatively, the panel may decide that the historical and user evidence is sufficient to add a public footpath along the lines of both the section of routes marked A to B to C and B to D, or that the evidence is insufficient and a public footpath should not be added along these routes. Um, so thank you. I hope that provides um, a, a summation of the application as a whole. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for that again. Um, <clears throat> It, it, it has actually made it a lot clearer in the site visits. Um, Caroline. Uh, I have a couple of questions, if, if that's okay. To me, it's obvious. Um, route 89 is A to B to D. That bit, I, I can't argue with at all. And oh. Uh, so A to B to D, that's that's route 89, and that can't be argued with. Yes, there's um, near B. There's a couple of obstructions because that's now a house instead of the old mill, and I don't think that's causing any harm, and I don't think that's for us to change or or get involved with. That's up to the applicant and. Um, uh, and whoever's putting this modification in to to go down a legal battle if that needs addressing. To me, it's whether we accept B to C and A to C. I don't see the point of A to C, but I do see the point of B to C now we've been on site that B to C has got makes it into a, a proper walking route a proper route and so I think I'm looking down the route of adding B to C but not A to C um, 
so that it does make a right through. My only concern is when you said about historic evidence of people walking across, that was from A to B to D, and it wasn't from B to C. So do we have evidence of at least 20 years of B to C being used? And I understand, yet yeah, at, at the moment it's being blocked off, so it won't be local, but do we have that evidence in the past? Um, so the majority of user evidence that was submitted, so out of the 12 that was submitted, um, 10 users said that they had walked um, the route in its entirety from point A to B to D. Um, and only two users had said that they used the route from points A to B to C. Um, so the, the evidence of use for the, the section of route, specifically B to C, is very is very low and offices on review of the evidence um, um, put forward the recommendation that the evidence of use for that specific section would not be sufficient to meet the relevant legal tests due to the level, due, due to the lack of numbers of, of members of the public who said that they've used that specific section of the route. Okay, well, see, that, that was the route I was going down is that we have is historic evidence, so we have to now accept it, but we haven't got historic evidence. There's a difference between historic and user evidence. So historic evidence can include any number of things, including um, things such as enclosure award and tithe maps and kind of specific historical documents. We also have um, historically the evidence from the time of the first draft definitive map that was created as a result of the 1949 Act. Um, so that's still classed as historical evidence. Um, so it's based on that evidence um, that the applicant has put forward the application that the existing line of public footpath 89 should be continued. Um, so so there's, there's two kind, kind of separate things with the historical and user evidence. Um, so if one um, if one certain type of evidence is insufficient but another type of evidence is sufficient um, and holds good probity then that can be enough to make an order um, to add a route um, or make a modification order. Could, could I ask just one more question, sorry. Um, what, what would win the legal battle that historic evidence or someone buying a property that says it has no rights away across and it's private in their legal document. Um, so the Section 53 process is all about the discovery of evidence. So when somebody buys a property, um, they obviously you would expect their legal representative to carry out the relevant searches and it may be that no public right of way comes up in that search is because there's nothing legally recorded mm. currently on the definitive map and statement. However, if a member of the public um, knows historically that the route has been used or they do some research into historical documents and they can find evidence, even if that evidence dates back as early as the 1800s, if they can show that that um, shows the existence of a public right of way that's not currently included on the definitive map, they can still make an application to have that route added. And if that evidence is considered sufficient enough to meet the relevant legal tests, then it can still be added to the definitive map and statement, um, even if it's never been on there previously. Okay. Can I just <clears throat> just break this up to sort of make it a little bit more um, mm -hmm. simple? Am I right in, in saying that uh, if we look at the map B to A and then up to Mill Cottage, the one with that's obstructed, it's like a little triangle, yes. that's on the definitive map at the moment? Yes, so that currently um, forms part of um, Public Footpath 89. Right. So, uh, and the problem there is it's obstructed. Now, as, as a panel, it's not our job to say whether things should be unobstructed or anything. We're here to look at the definitive map. 
So we could leave that on the definitive map and let someone else uh, sort out it, the enforcement. I think what's what from the, the visit and speaking to um, the local member and, and the um, neighbouring member, they suggested, as I think one or two of the panellists have done, that we take the map uh, point B to point C and that's got to be added to the definitive map. Is, is that right? Is that the proposal? Um, yes, yeah, so that would be the recommendation um, to, to add the route. Um, you, so the route can either be added in its entirety um, from B to X to C based on that map um, or the, the line, the route C to X could be um, classed as a continuation of public footpath 89. Because I, I but personally, as, not as chair, but in my opinion, the, the common sense route really is to um, take it from B to C and add that, and then, as I say, leave the other piece on the definitive uh, map, and, and that's that's for someone who, who whose job it is to take on if they want to. Does that work for you, David? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel very, very torn about something which goes through somebody's, effectively through someone's front garden. Yes. But if the evidence of usage um, goes back a very considerable length of time, then um, that then determines for us really what the outcome needs to be. Um, I think if um, pre presumably all the problems of what might be considered as trespass and all the rest of it, all of that goes away if we define um, B to C as being the definitive route. Um, so I suppose that there's the option for someone to challenge our decision, isn't there? Carolyn? Shall I make a suggestion that we accept this in part, we accept C to B to D and D to B to A as um, which C, D to B to A is already accepted as route 89 so we add on D to B to C onto for public footpath but we ignore A to C. Well that stays as it is. It stays, it stays as it is because it part of A to C is already public footpath yeah. but then like I said at the beginning that's for someone else to fight or, or, or not. I think once that route's in place, people wouldn't. Yeah. So, so you're saying, just to, to, to get it right, yeah. for, it is a very complicated oh, one, um, that, that uh, we leave, as, as I said, um, the definitive map as it is, yeah. but add in B to C. B to C. Yeah. Does that, is, is that going to cause problems on the opposite side? Or? Um, officers will um, act on whatever members recommend right. decision thank, is. Thank you. David, are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. I think uh, the, but we, we need to also consider that the yeah, uh, definitive map shows it as a cul-de-sac. Um, if we were to accept that, we've then got the problem that the road which goes then to C um, from the end of the cul-de-sac isn't on the definitive map and so we end up with a problem all over again. Yeah. So I think what's been proposed is the best solution. Will you second it then? I'll second that. So we've got a proposal from Carolyn, seconded by David, and those in favour? That's three of us. So um, I think that goes with the officer's recommendation but uh, we can sort of certainly take down what's been proposed. Okay, thank you very much. And oh, the, uh, there we are. In terms of uh, exclusion of the public, I don't believe there are any items. No. So uh, we'll close the meeting at what time is it now? Uh, Twelve seventeen.
12 17 uh, and as i say thank you all for attending it was we sort of had a little drive around the countryside and a little walk around the countryside uh, but i think we got to a sensible conclusion that the local members have uh, agreed with okay many thanks and uh, we'll end the meeting at that point